Now that we've seen that Windows may suspend and terminate an application, we need to talk about what that means for the user experience. Suppose the user here is working with this application. They enter some data, then something interrupts their work. Maybe they receive a phone call or an email. They minimize the app while they go off and deal with the higher priority item. At this point, the app is eligible for suspension. If Windows suspends the app, then the app is eligible for termination. Let's suppose Windows does that, suspends and terminates the app. If the user then returns to this application, their expectation generally will be that the app is in the same state as when they left it. In reality, of course, Windows suspended and terminated the application, and it is our job as the developers to make sure we save the user's data and then restore it as necessary. And the discussion we need to have now is when and where do we save the data and when and where do we restore it? And to do that, we need to talk about application states. There are four application states, and a state really just, just describes the resources the app is receiving from Windows. So not running means the app's not in memory, so it's, it's not receiving any CPU time, it's not receiving any memory. And then there are two running states, and they differ just by whether the UI is visible. In both cases, the app is receiving both CPU time and memory. And then suspended, we already talked about. The app is in memory, but it's not receiving CPU time. Those two running states are new with the Windows 10 Anniversary Edition. Previously, they were combined into a single running state, and we'll see the details of those in just a minute. As an app runs, it transitions between the states. Those transitions are, are called the application's life cycle. Remember our goal here. Our goal is to save the user's work and then restore it later. And really, the key point that we're, we're addressing here is where and when do we save it? Where and when do we restore it? The app class notifies you for many of these transitions. So any of these notifications here, these are candidates for when we might save the user's data and when we might restore it. Notice that you don't get any notifications when you're entering the not running state. Also, notice that there's a direct transition from running in background to not running. That means it's possible to go from running in background to not running without going through the suspended state. So if we put all that together, then the, the guidance that Windows provides is that you should save the user's work when you enter the background. Any later and it's gonna be too late. For example, if you saved it here as you entered the suspended state, Remember, there's a possibility of leaving running in background and going right to not running without going through suspended. So that would be too late. Entered background is a better choice. So the guidance is subscribe to the entered background event, save the user's work there. There are lots of options for where you can save the data. We're going to do a simple example here. Windows provides the application data area of persistent storage for the application to use, and it has a dictionary in it called values with nice synchronous methods, like here I'm using an indexer. And so this is a dictionary that stores key value pairs. So all we're doing is taking the user's data, whatever they entered to the UI, and loading it into this dictionary. And we would do this in, the, in our handler for the entered background event. That's all we're going to talk about with the application data API. There's a lot more details in the documentation. Now we have the user's data saved to disk. We want to restore it at startup. The guidance here is a little bit subtle. You don't want to restore it all the time. For example, suppose the user was running the app and the app crashed. You wouldn't want to try to restore the state at startup because it could be that state that caused the crash. So, so the guidance here is to be selective on when you restore the data. So you do it on launch, but only in two cases when the previous execution state was closed by user, so the user intentionally terminated the application, or the state is terminated, which means Windows suspended and then terminated the application. Here's some example code on how to do this. You would be working in your on launch method because you want to do this at startup. You would check the previous execution state. Only in those two cases would you do the restoration. And then you would read the values in from application data. And of course, this, this example just shows, shows reading it into your app. You would need to then load it into your UI as well. 